What is going on fellas? It's your boy Halvin and in this video I'm going to be going over what is ad fatigue, how would you know if you're experiencing ad fatigue and how to combat this so you can keep on delivering great results to your clients while not having to overpay Facebook for it. If you haven't subscribed to my channel remember to hit the subscribe button, hit the like button and turn the notification bell so you can be notified every time I upload great informative videos like these ones and you can take advantage of them. Remember, if at any point in time you have any questions, you are more than welcome to leave them in the comment section or to message me on Instagram, which I answer to most people that message me over there. So without further ado, let's dive right into my computer. Has it ever happened to you that an ads perform really, really well and then results start to drop off out of nowhere? Yeah, so that's a sign of ad fatigue and don't ignore it, but also don't kill yourself either over it because I'm going to share with you some useful information in this video with this document and I'm going to dive into an ad account to show you what ad fatigue looks like so you can combat it yourself and then you can start bringing your prices down again. But before I look further into this, why does this happen? Why do costs go up and results start dropping off out of nowhere and how can I see this? So here's some sign of ad fatigue that I put together for you guys. When the frequency increases and the price per result increases as well. So the frequency is how many times has your audience watched that video or seen that picture that you're putting out there for them, right? How many times is if it increased, right? And you're seeing a decrease in results and your price increases, then that's a sign of ad fatigue. And that should tell you that you should do something about this, right? When you see a decrease in the click through rate, that's another sign of ad fatigue. And that should tell you as well to look into this and also an engagement decrease. Now, how often can ad fatigue happen? The budget will tell you this depends on your budget. Obviously, if you're running, a campaign or if you're running an ad account with five thousand dollars a day you're gonna experience more ad fatigue or ad fatigue more often than somebody that's only spending two thousand or say three thousand dollars a month on ads okay so the budget is going to tell you how often ad fatigue is going to happen to you and how often should you refresh your creatives or should you refresh all the other things that i'm going to be sharing with you because at the end of the day Ad fatigue just simply means that the audience is tired of your ad. They've seen it so many times that they're not taking any action and they're getting annoyed of it. So they just keep scrolling down and this translates into them not taking the desired action that you want them to take, which usually translates to results dropping off and, and, and prices going up for, for those same results. So if you happen to advertise very niched in a very niche location, then this is something that you're going to experience more often than the person that does not. Now, that doesn't mean that you're doing it wrong. It's just, it's just the fact of the matter. You're just going to experience it more often. So we're going to be going over ads manager. We're going to be looking at, uh, we're going to be looking at the campaigns. What does this look like? You know, how can we, how can we prevent it? And so forth and so on. As you can see right here, I'm going to dive into this client's ad account and I'm going to show you this campaign with these two different assets that we ran. So there's ad set one and there's ad, ad set two. The reason I know this one is one is because it doesn't have the new copyright in it. And the reason I know this one is two is because it has the two copyrights. Now, if I scroll this to the right, I can see the frequency, as I said. So from this one, which is the new one, I can see a lower frequency, 2.45. So which means that the people that saw this ad saw an average of 2.45 times. And this one in the bottom has a frequency rate of 2.88. Now, if I go ahead and toggle this to the right a little bit more, I can see that on this one, I spent a little bit more. This one, I spent a little bit less. And um, uh, this one was friend first, as I said, and the other one was friend secondly. Now, if I go into uh, the actual metrics that matter, like cost per submit application, how many applications were submitted, the cost per schedule, you can see that this one is slightly on the uh, submit applications uh, more up than the second one, right? you can see that this appointments, right? The, the, the amount that I paid for appointments is the crazy difference between the amount that I paid for appointments on this other campaign that I ran, okay? Now, the reason why I knew that this campaign right here was experiencing some type of ad fatigue is because I already consciously knew 
that the creatives and the offer that I've been using for this one has been running for a long time. So once I refresh the campaign and, uh, and actually, yeah, refresh the campaign for the new month, and I seen these type of results, that was an immediate sign that something had to be done, that I was experiencing ad fatigue with this campaign. And it was confirmed when I changed some things around and all my prices went back to normal again. So it went from 455 to 312, right? And the most important ones are the schedules, right? This is a dealership's account. It went from $27.31 for one appointment schedule to $7.36. You know, that's a lot. That's a big deal. And that's why you want to pay attention to this video until the very end. Because if you can save almost, well, more than 50, 75% for a desired result that you want for your dealership, then that potentially means more profit, more money for you, right? And more results for them. Now, let's go back to the frequency for a second. There isn't really a specific frequency that I look for. There isn't really a right or wrong frequency, but something that I personally stick to with my dealerships is frequencies below three, 325 tops maybe, if the audience has uh, performed really well in the past. Because the thing is, you can't compare a frequency from interest to a frequency from a warmer audience like it is a retargeting audience, right? The frequency on the retargeting audience is supposed to be, you know, higher than the 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 interest um, the interest targeting audience uh, for short, right? Because the retargeting audience is going to be a lot smaller than the interest targeted audience most of the time. So you want to be careful with that on how you judge your frequency. Okay, which audience am I targeting? Right? Is it a look-alike, right? Is it a look-alike audience? Is it a retargeting audience when I'm actually retargeting the customers that I have in my database? Is it a interest-based audience, called audience that I've never targeted to before, right? So you want to be mindful of the type of audience that you're advertising to before you judge an audience or the results that you're getting from the audience based on the frequency of that audience that you're getting, okay? Now, on my personal experience, when the audience is warmer, say a lookalike audience or a retargeting of email lists or sales history, you can get away with something a little bit higher than what you would expect on an interest-based targeting because depending on the offer, the traffic is going to be a little bit more qualified. And since they're already familiarized with your business, it allows you to go a little bit more up on frequency before they get annoyed and we start experiencing ad fatigue. So, you know, that allows you, when they're more familiarized with your business, it allows you to show your ad more frequently to them before they get annoyed and basically say, what the fuck, you know? <laughs> so, you want to keep that in mind. Now, one other thing is, a lot of people get scared when ad fatigue starts to happen to a campaign that's delivered great results. And I don't think it's a bad sign because the way that you should think about it is, well, people are seeing my offer and it worked. Now we have to go ahead and change something about it, right? So it's just a sign for you to change something to keep on bringing business to your client, okay? Now we're gonna go over the things that you should be looking into uh, when it comes to fighting out of fatigue. So what I'm going to do for this, I'm not even going to go back to the document because it's pretty straightforward. I'm going to put this into the YouTube video so you guys can just keep it for yourself and just go over it yourself. But I'm going to go over a test ad account that I have and I'm going to show you exactly what would I be fighting and from which points. All right. So I'm going to go to the um, test ad account. And this is something that I've built, uh, um, you know, a little time just to give you guys uh, an example. Right. So in this, I would be advertising kind of like a dojo or something that, that teaches women um, self-defense, right? So are you sick and tired of being scared to walk at night by yourself? Hate, hate the rushing feeling you get because you feel someone is watching you? It's not your fault, and we're here to help you. Join us for our women's self-defense training this week for free. Only 10 coupons available. So click on the, big, on the, link, uh, click on the button below to secure your spot. 
I know this primary text is not perfect. I know this ad creative is not perfect. And I know this headline free self-defense training for women is not perfect because as I said, I put it together um, in a very, very short amount of time. You know, it was only for this video. Now, the first thing that I would do if I was experiencing ad fatigue on the campaign like this, say this campaign was performing really, really well, is that I would go to the creative itself, right? And the reason why I would go to the creative and the creative is either, you know, the picture or video that you're running with the ad is because when you scroll down your newsfeed, the first thing that catches your attention is most of the times the creative. Say for example, you're running a campaign and you're using an image as your creative, you could potentially add some of this image to make it more attention calling. Or you can change the image and put it for a video or just change the image, the image completely for a completely different image. All right, that's the first, my first spot. That's where I would go first, changing the creative. And it can, as I said, it can literally be as simple as just adding a new design of the image, uh, changing the whole image by itself, changing the text in the image, changing the text color, or just coming up with a different template, coming up with a different image strategy, right? So say for example, I have this one right here, I could go in and I could change it for, let me edit it, change media, I could change it for an actual female, walking alone at night, right? As I said, the frequency in which you do this will be determined by your budget, by how much money you're spending on that campaign, how many people are watching it, and your location and where you're advertising that campaign, right? Because it's not the same thing when you're advertising something in a five mile radius versus a 15 mile radius. And I'm gonna dive in a little bit deeper into that just in one second. The next thing that I would do, if this doesn't work, bring my prices down again, is the ad copy. Now the ad copy is composed of two different um, sections, the primary text and the headline, right? As you guys can see, the headline is this right here that's in bold letters that clearly stands out to you right after you can see the creative, right? So you see the creative and then your eyes are drawn automatically to this right here because the letters are bigger and they're bold. It's like they just they just meant it's it's just meant for it to stand out on itself, right? So it goes, so my thing and my theory goes from the creative to the headline and from the headline to the primary text. Okay. So the headline would be the second thing that I would change. Then I would move over to primary text from there. Okay. A very important thing to note here is that when it comes time to updating your creative, especially the headline, it's super helpful when you think about it by advertising that business from different viewpoints, right? If you think about it that way, you will never run out of headlines. Then I would go over to the primary text. So for example, this one is, are you sick and tired of being scared to walk at night by yourself? Do you hate the rushing feeling you get because you feel someone is watching you? It's not your fault and we're here to help you. Join us for a woman's self-defense self training this week for free. Only 10 coupons available. Click on the link below to secure your spot. So if I change the creative, I change the headline and nothing, and it doesn't seem to be working, then I go to the primary text, right? And it's that's really, really easy to tweak. You can literally change the words around and that can make a big difference for your campaign. So say for example, are you sick, are you sick and tired of being walk, uh, be, are you sick and tired of being scared to walk at night by yourself? I could potentially erase this part right here, right? I could potentially erase this right here and that would kind of be its own new primary text. Hate the Russian feeling you get because you feel someone's watching you at night? And then I'll add something else like, hate the Russian feeling you get because you feel someone's watching you while walking at night? Like you see that just with that little change, just by adding two different words and erasing something, that makes it a new primary text. So it's that primary text is really, really easy to tweak. And the headline is really, really easy to come up with. Once you're thinking of advertising the, 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 the business that you're advertising from different points. All right. The other thing 
that you can do to fight off your, your ad fatigue is to go into the ad set level. Now, many people overlook this part right here and it's super, super important. So say for example, I've already tried what I just mentioned before, the creative, the headline, the primary text, right? If I'm advertising an area where it's only say three miles, right? Just say women in the area of Pittsburgh and that live around the business uh, uh, for in a three mile radius, I would increase, right? Even if it's just by another mile, the radius, because maybe, right? Where you're advertising your offer, maybe not enough women live there. That could be a reason. Or maybe not enough women that walk at night live there, right? Maybe you live, maybe the, the gym or, or the self-defense self training um, uh, program uh, or gym is located at a neighborhood that or located at a place where it's all rich people and they all have their cars and they don't have to worry about wa walking at night, right? So being able to expand your radius, being able to determine which locations would make your campaigns more effective would allow you to fight off ad fatigue and would allow you to keep those um, convert, keep those results up while paying a lower price for it. Because what's going to happen is that once you hit the right audience, right, they're all going to be taking action if the offer is really enticing. And, you know, Facebook is not going to have to show them the ad three, four times for them to take action, which is going to decrease your cost. So that's basically the whole thing around it. So know who you need to target and don't be scared to expand your radius. Another thing that you can do, and I do this very, very often, is turn on this option right here, dynamic creative. So if you feel like you're not confident enough in just one piece of creative that you have for that campaign, this can be even more helpful than A-B testing because what's gonna happen is that if I turn this off, and I'm gonna show you right now what that looks like, I can go to my ad, right? And I can add in the other image that I had. Let's see if that comes up. The other image that I had right here. And what's going to happen is I'm telling Facebook, Facebook, here are two images that I want you to use for this campaign. You, with your algorithm, you choose which one you think would work better with the people that I'm targeting. And Facebook is going to take these two images and they're going to pick the best one that they think is going to convert better for that target audience that you're targeting. And then they're gonna use that one image that's converting better than the other one more often than the one that's not, which is why you will get better results while keeping your cost down. You don't have to guess. You're giving, you're giving Facebook, you're telling Facebook to do all the hard work for you. And that's the same thing that you can do with the headline. You can keep on adding more headlines right here and then basically just let Facebook um, and, and look at this option right here. Optimize creative for each person. Vary your ad creative and destination based on each person's likelihood to respond, right? So Facebook knows if a user is more likely to respond from an ad on their newsfeed or if they're more likely to respond from an ad through watching the ad on a story. So you're, this, is, this is super, super, super helpful, guys. And it basically takes off the hard work from you because as I said, you're giving it all to Facebook. Facebook, use these creatives, use these primary texts, use these headlines, and you choose which combination is gonna make this specific group of people you know, sign up for my offer while I don't have to pay as much for it to happen. And last but not least is the offer in and of itself. So if you've tried everything that I mentioned previously, the creative, the headline, the primary text, you've played around with the audiences, then maybe what you're advertising is not calling your target audience attention and you have to be aware of that, right? So maybe you have to advertise something better, come up with a different type of offer. Your job as a, as a marketer is to be creative enough to come up with offers so that you can show your dealer, your, not your dealership, sorry, I keep on, your bit, the business that you're advertising for, and that way they can pick and choose which ones work better for them. So if this wasn't working, 
and not enough women were interested in this self uh, self defense training class for this week, then I would make it three months. Join our self defense training class for three months for free, you know. And then I'll put in the value, value of a thousand dollars, right? And then that can make him more interested on the offer. Or you can come up with a whole different type of offer for that industry. And I and I, I don't know right off the top of my head right now because I've never worked with a um, self defense gym or anything like that, um, uh, like another type of offer that we could that you guys could potentially do for it. But if it's a dealership, you can you know do voucher storage down payment. You can do free oil change for a year. You can do extended warranty for free. You can do a down payment starting at a sweet spot. You can do you know low um, payments if with a trade in and so forth and so on. So there are no limitations as far as what you can do. Your job as a as a market is to be creative enough. To come up with these so that way you can put them all together on ads manager and that it can give you your desired results for your client so i'm going to leave this um document on the uh description section of this video so you guys can keep it and you guys can look over it to see um and maybe check more what you thinking you're doing wrong so that way you can change it accordingly like i mentioned here all right, guys, this was all for this video. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope I was able to bring some type of value to you. Remember that if I did, subscribe to my channel, like this video, and share with somebody that you think might benefit from this information. On to the next one.